Welcome to another episode of Attitude, where my guests and I discuss topics that inform and inspire. I'm Mary Arnott, your host and producer. My guest for this show is Hopkinton resident Nancy Jennison. Nancy is an inspiration in five distinguished professions. In today's program, I'll be talking with Nancy about her careers as a teacher, staff developer, public speaker, author, and consultant to school districts. As a teacher, Nancy was a finalist for the Teacher of the Year Award in Fairfax County, Virginia, and also received a Celebrate Literacy Award from the International Reading Association while teaching in Massachusetts. She is a National Board Certified Teacher and is certified as a Reading Recovery Teacher. As a staff developer, public speaker, and consultant, Nancy has worked with school administrators, teachers, and parents in over 40 states. She has been featured as a guest speaker at many national conventions, including the International Reading Association's Annual Convention, the National Elementary Principals Association, the National Council of Teachers of English, and the National Indian School Board Summer Conferences. Nancy has also served as a literacy specialist and language arts staff developer in Massachusetts, Virginia, and New Jersey. Her extensive experience has contributed to her success as an author. Nancy's most recent book, Integrating Test Prep into Reading and Writing Workshops, focuses on classroom-tested lessons and activities that teach students the skills they need to become successful readers and writers and excel in the test. That's a mouthful, as well as the subtitle for her newest book, scheduled for release soon, and we'll have to ask her all about that, but it's being published by Scholastic Publishers. She has also co-authored numerous articles and books, including Let's Write and Portfolios in the Classroom, a Teacher's Source Book. Welcome, Nancy, and thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for that nice introduction, <laughs> and it's an honor to be here with you. Well, I'm very happy that you're here. And we have so much to talk about, I hardly know where to begin. <laughs> but I was thinking maybe we would talk about first about your teaching career. It seems to um, have given you the background for many of the other things that you've done. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about where you taught, what grades, and for how long? Sure, I'd be glad to. I taught, I started teaching in Massachusetts because I always tell people, I used to park my car in Harvard Yard. <laughs> I'm from Boston originally. So I started teaching in, um, in, in Massachusetts mm -hmm. and was in Massachusetts in Quincy and then in North Adams, Massachusetts. And then my family moved to um, Fairfax County, Virginia. So then I continued there, but I also became a staff developer and that means I worked with teachers mm -hmm. and modeled lessons in their classrooms. And I did that in Massachusetts as well as in Virginia. So that was um, it, kindergarten through grade uh, one in Massachusetts. And then in Virginia, I worked in grades K through six. Um, something else I did in Massachusetts during the summer, summer months and on vacations um, was I worked with Massachusetts um, migrant education mm -hmm. uh, students and so that was wonderful. I, I really enjoyed that and that was in Springfield, Mass. Um, my career ended in uh, New Jersey with, with my teaching and working as a staff developer. And in New Jersey, I worked in um, grades K through five, and I was the literacy staff developer for a whole school district. So when I was in Virginia, I was a reading specialist and staff developer, mm -hmm. but in New Jersey, in, the, in that school district, I was in charge of the language arts for the district. So. When did you actually develop your love for reading and writing? I mean, it seems like <laughs> you already accomplished so much as a teacher, <laughs> but then you went on to do other things. When did that start for you, do you think? Well, you know, it, it really started when I was a, a little kid. When I was in elementary school, one of my favorite things to do was to write plays. And so uh, I used to write them and produce them and direct them and get the kids in my neighborhood to join with me and perform. and. We used to hang signs up on the uh, telephone poles in the neighborhood and charge five cents. <laughs> you didn't have lemonade stands, you had plays. <laughs> we had plays and uh, that was really great. And then when I was um, in high school, I continued writing and um, wrote some different things and got them published. And then when I was in college, I did the same thing. And, and then that uh, led into my Write, writing of resource books for teachers. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it seems like that you had a love for reading and writing that further grew as, as you were a teacher, and then you put that to work to help other teachers. Does that sound kind of how it all came together? Yes, it did, and it, it all came together. Actually, um, when, when my colleagues and I, when I worked in Virginia, we were, we were working with portfolio assessment, mm -hmm. and what that means is that, you know, students have report cards and, and they get grades, but it's wonderful, too, if they have supplements to the report card where they show their, their best work that they themselves choose and then they evaluate it and set goals for how they can do better. Mm -hmm. So we were known as the portfolio school in Fairfax County, Virginia. I see. And so because of that we were we did 50 workshops in other schools in one year. We just kept being um, asked to go from one school to the next and, and do workshops for teachers and administrators. So then we we wound up at the National Council of Teachers of English in Washington, D.C. at a big conference. And so, who was in the audience? <laughs> Little did I know, the head of Scholastic Books. Oh, let me see that. <laughs> so she uh, came up to us afterwards and she said, she thought we did an, an inspirational job and she was so enthused and she said, would we like to write a book for her? So, do you see like working with teachers and mm -hmm. collaborating because we're all, we all learn together the teachers and mm -hmm. I do. I won't hold this up. It might be a little hard yeah, to see this on the old, screen, but it definitely copy. is a, a good letter. I can see that. So I that think. was how we, we first uh, started writing the book. So I had co-authors for that, for that book, the portfolio book. And then um, after we wrote that, um, my principal and I wrote another one called Let's Write. Okay, now you've given me a couple of things here which I think you just mentioned. So let's start with, uh, is this the portfolio in the classroom, the teacher's yes. source book that you were mentioning? Yes, that's the book that the uh, editor-in-chief of Scholastic asked us if we'd like to write. Mm -hmm. All right. And sometimes, sometimes the company will ask you if you want to write a book, but the next book that my principal and I wrote together, we decided as we looked through the Scholastic catalog that the Let's Write book, that they really needed um, a selection of a book on writing for, right. for young children. That too. So it all happened, Mary, when I was um, working really hard developing a portfolio of my teaching mm -hmm. and uh, going through the process of, of trying to achieve national board certification, which is a great program for me it was because I got to see myself on videotape as a teacher and I kept looking at my lessons and thinking well how can I do these better you know so it's very um, it helps you be very retrospective about your work and so as we were doing that I was uh, working with a first grade classroom and developed a whole writing program with them and those lessons that um, were very worked out very well and that's how this book came about so it was the result of that year when I was going for my national board certification. And just so the audience knows, in case any we have any teachers or parents that want to look up these books, um, you wrote these under a different name, a former name. So yes. this really is Nancy Jennison on here, yes. but <laughs> under a former name. Yes, Ara Glado was my name before I yeah. married Christopher Jennison. Yes. Now and it's Jennison. our audience may remember that I had Chris on the show. He's also an author, so there's yes. a lot of talent in this family. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You've given me something else here, too. Tell me a little bit about what this big one oh, is. Oh, sure. This well, looks like it's been around for a little while. <laughs> you know, it has. And, um, one, of the, one of my favorite things to do is work in the classroom with teachers and students and model um, teaching practices for them. And, mm -hmm. and so that's a book that I wrote. Um, notice the title? Yes. When I was young in Boston. Boston uh -huh. <laughs> and, and so um, children love it when you do what they do. And if I'm going to ask students to use different parts of the writing process, like mm -hmm. brainstorming ideas, um, organizing their ideas, writing a draft, revising, editing, and bringing something to final copy, it's great if I do it in my own writing life. So I actually use that book in classrooms to teach with. And the children, I think their favorite part was me showing them my revisions. <laughs> so you use this in your classrooms when you were teaching what grades? Um, that one, you know, I honestly could use that 
really for any grade because when I was working with grades five and six, I used it to show how you can really write with beautiful language and mm -hmm. use really strong details to, to give imagery in your writing. But when I was working with the little kids, you know, like say like in grades K or one, we might just be looking at the parts of a story that it had a beginning and a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. and so. The, with picture books, like that is, it's a memoir, there's really no set age level. Depending on how the book is written, you can use it for all different um, reasons. So I see that putting that together gave you some ways to give the kids some tips on how to put a books together if they wanted to be writers and maybe in their futures as yes. well. Yes, and when I was in Virginia, it was, it was so exciting because we had a writer's club. We had 120 students who were members of that club. And so just like when I was a little girl and I had things published, mm -hmm. I helped those children um, get things published and their parents were part of the club too. So it was, it was very exciting. Well, I can tell you, for someone who's tried to think of a way that I could become a writer, it's not a talent that I have. So I really admire what you've been able to do because it takes great skill and just such a passion, I think, for what you're doing to be able to write. I, I can't do it, but I'm glad you can. But you know what? If you give me some time to work with you, I could turn you into oh, a I'm writer. Oh, I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> little side benefit from doing the show with you, huh? <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I do want to get to the topic of your latest book. Okay. Because I am just fascinated for <laughs> how many pages you wrote here. 252. This, yeah, this is hot off the press. Presses, folks. This is Nancy's <laughs> latest book, and I'll just hold it up. You can see it's not even bound yet because this was the script that you sent to Scholastic Publishers, yes, right? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. And um, so, why don't, tell, why don't you tell us a little bit about this, how it came together, when is it supposed to be coming out, how do you see it being used? And Sure, I'll be glad to. Well, um, the book came about because of my work in the schools, and in addition to the other hats I wore with teaching language arts with teachers and doing demonstration lessons, mm -hmm. I also helped with all the test preparation and helped teachers know what to do to effectively get the kids ready and help the children to be really relaxed about the state tests in the different states that I worked with. Mm -hmm. So that was 18 years of work on that. and. Um, so the book came about because I know that so many teachers and so many students are worried. They're worried about how the children are going to do, and the children are nervous about how they're going to do. Not to mention the parents, but. <laughs> the parents, yes, and maybe the real estate brokers, too, who like <laughs> to show the test scores to, to help uh, with, with showing what towns are Have nice to move into mm -hmm. and so on. But, um, you know, there's, there's really a way to integrate test prep into, into solid teaching instruction without teaching to the test and, and without um, making it extrinsic to the curriculum, but mm -hmm. rather it's just ro woven in. So you're teaching effective and best teaching practices during your reading and writing, but you know what the test is going to be testing because I show teachers how to study the state test mm -hmm. and how to analyze what reading and writing skills are being, are being asked of students. Mm -hmm. For example, in chapters one and two in the book, I, I studied state tests from different parts of the United States and, and found that there were 14 different categories of reading skills that are pretty much tested throughout the United States. So if you can just use effective teaching and, and best teaching practices with in your reading and your writing workshop mm -hmm. um, throughout the year um, and link it into like science and social studies because students need to comprehend all across the curriculum, not just for the state test, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you can do that, the more you do that, then the more solid they are as readers and writers and the better they perform on the test. So I had one little girl, for example, who said to me, I'm so glad you came into my classroom and taught us all those strategies. When I took the test, I was so relaxed, she said, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I felt like there was an angel on my shoulder. <laughs> What a nice oh what a nice comment to make. <laughs> That's yeah. And also helpful to always have an angel on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Well, testing in schools is certainly a hot topic today and this is very timely. I mean if you yes. even have seen recent news they've talked about some schools wanting to do away with final exams because of the pressure on the students to take them and so it's it's definitely a timely book. 
Yes. Tell us a little bit about the schedule of when it's coming out and what's going to happen with it. Oh, sure. Um, I just heard from the editor-in-chief of Scholastic today, and um, in about a month, it's going to be available for pre-ordering through Amazon in um, January. So let me hold up that title page again so people might want to be able to do that. Yeah, that's going to be the cover. That's how it's going to look. In January, it's going to be... Um, uh, uh, in the Scholastic Book Catalog. Mm -hmm. In March, it'll, it'll be available as an ebook from um, Teachers Express, which is part of Scholastic. And then in May, it'll be released at the International Reading uh, Association Conference, and I'll be there um, in the booth um, signing the book and then also doing some workshops for Scholastic. And then the book will be on open order at that point. Um, the book itself will be in the warehouse and on op open order. Mm -hmm. Well, just so our, when our audience, this show will air at different times, so our audience knows Nancy's talking about being at the conference in May of 2011. Right. So if the show airs before that, they'll kind of get a time frame for what you were talking about, and then afterwards, you know, if it's shown, they'll know that you were there. Yes. So, and where is this conference again? Orlando. Orlando. Oh, you're taking me with you? Sure. Because <laughs> if you write something. <laughs> if I write, oh, i got to work for it. <laughs> I'm kidding you. No. Um, you had also briefly mentioned to me that you were thinking about also doing children's books. Oh, yes. I, yes. It's, you know, like I said, for students, there's nothing better than seeing that you use the same procedures that you're teaching the students to do. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we do in writing workshop with students is we encourage them to keep a writer's notebook. And, and in their writer's notebook, they might jot down ideas that they have for something that they're going to write and brainstorm some of those ideas. So I have a, a little writer's notebook that I've been holding on to, and, and I brainstorm ideas of a book that I'm going to be writing. Um, it's a memoir. It's the working title right now is Sweet Summer Memories. But I, but I also, um, in, this, in my own little writer's notebook, made a little storyboard for myself of how each page was going to go. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, now what I'm going to be doing is inserting nonfiction information into the memoir so that the students will be able to read about it and learn things at the same time. So, um, so it's a fictional book, but with some good lessons in it? Is that kind of some real facts and well it, it's actually a um, a memoir so a lot of it oh, is memoir. Really, yeah okay. so a lot of it is is really exactly what happened maybe you know one, one of the things that writers can do is change change what happened a tiny bit mm -hmm. so some of the things might be changed a tiny bit but it's pretty much what happened in in different parts of my childhood um in during the summer and uh, I learned when I, when I was doing consulting with Bill Martin, um, he's the person who wrote Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? And lots oh, okay. of little children. children have grown up with that book. One of the things he told me to remember if you're going to write children's books is make sure it has universality. So my book, um, When I Was Young in Boston, Oh, this big one again, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Would have universality, perhaps, for people in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. because they probably would find a topic of Boston interesting. But for somebody in Mo Montana, they might not find that as interesting. But if you go with a title like Sweet Summer Memories and you think of, of things that everybody can identify with, then that kind of a topic would have universality. Mm -hmm. So I was very enthused that, you know, while I was working for this man and doing workshops with teachers in his organization, he taught me that. So now I'm working on that myself. Do you have a time frame you're looking at? How long do you think it's going to take you to pull this one together? <laughs> How long? You know, I don't have a time frame, but, but um, that, that's one of the things I'm going to do. But something else I'm going to do is I do want to write for educational journals, and I want to write mm -hmm. about the topic of um, how to integrate reading and uh, how to integrate test prep into reading and writing workshops. So, so that's another, another goal that I have at mm -hmm. the present. I don't know how you find the time. I mean, you're going to be off doing a conference on this book and signings, and I don't know where you get your energy and the time. But <laughs> You know, I think it's that I believe in it, and I've seen the difference that, that this kind of work makes in, mm -hmm. in helping children to develop a love of reading that's in writing that stays with them over the course of a lifetime. Like, not just to get ready and pass a test, mm -hmm. but that really sticks with them, and, and they just love to read. and and they love to write.
I loved your story about the little girl that told you she had the angel on the shoulder because you were in a classroom. Any other experiences that you want to tell us about in terms oh, of yeah. teachers or students? Oh, or? sure. This is another good one. Um, when I left New Jersey to move back up to Massachusetts, mm -hmm. they had a, a party for me. And so my, my colleagues, who were also staff developers in different subject areas, asked the students, well, what's it like when Mrs. Jennison comes into the class and does lessons? So one student said, it's like getting an upgrade. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> is that from business class to first class? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was so funny. And um, they were saying that I was bouncy and so positive and made learning fun. And so I think that you know, I want the children to feel that way, mm -hmm. and I also want them, if it's about test prep, I also want them to feel empowered that they're going to do well on the test and they don't need to worry about anything. Well, as a teacher, public speaker, consultant, I mean, is there one aspect of everything that you've done that you like the most, author, or does it kind of all come together for you and you enjoy everything? Well, I do enjoy everything. You know, I love to work with teachers mm -hmm. and, and collaborate with teachers. And when I served in New Jersey for 10 years, I, I was so honored to be able to study at Columbia University with the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project for nine years. Mm -hmm. So I took so many of those ideas back and shared them with, with my colleagues in, in, in the Tenafly schools. So it was really fantastic to be able to work with my fellow colleagues and plan you know, really effective lessons that built on students' uh, needs and, and help them to further their learning. So I loved the process of working with teachers, mm -hmm. developing lessons which we knew were implementing best practices because they came from ideas that were generated through Columbia, but then seeing the, the results with the kids. I mean, there's just nothing like it. Uh, do you ever think of going back to teaching or are you going to stay an author for a while? Well, when I was writing the book, um, I, worked, I had the privilege of working mm -hmm. with eight teachers and two of the teachers with whom I worked in Massachusetts were at Richer Elementary School in Marlboro, Stephanie Tesserero and um, Melissa Erickson, and I did do uh, lessons in their classrooms. And, and so there is another idea percolating in my head for another resource book for teachers, which may be down the road. It's percolating. All right, you don't have to give us any, <laughs> any secrets away here today. But I love to go into um, classrooms and work with teachers, especially when we think in terms of how we both can grow from each other's knowledge mm -hmm. and, and, and be able to analyze how the children are doing and what we can do to help them to grow stronger as readers and writers. Mm -hmm. So I love doing that. Now, when I began talking to you about doing a show with me, and I was so delighted you wanted to, but you said you had to finish your book, yes. which you were, you were working on at the time, and now it's yeah. all done, as we know. Uh, it seemed like you were very focused on that. Oh, Is that yes. what you do? You kind of isolate yourself and just really focus in on what you're doing at the time? Is you know, that's a really good question. Well, you, he, here are the other aspects of my life. We have five grandchildren. So I spend a lot of time with the children, my mm -hmm. children and the grandchildren. And then we have a wonderful church that we belong to, and I do a lot of work in our church. Mm -hmm. We have great neighbors and friends, old friends, new friends, our relatives in Massachusetts. Um, and then I have hobbies. So I do have all those things, too. It's kind of a full life. Mm -hmm. But when I wrote that book, I did have to be disciplined. And so... I probably initially worked about four hours a day on the book, mm -hmm. but then I would, because I was working with six teachers from New Jersey, and, and, and there's a real teacher's voice throughout the book, I went to New Jersey once a month and met with them, and um, we shared ideas together. And um, so as the book progressed, however, mm -hmm. I did have to spend much more than four hours a day on it. So um, I wanted to get the book ready before our daughter Julie's baby came. <laughs> so that's kind of a funny goal to have the book ready before then. But I thought the publishers would give you a deadline. I didn't know Julie was giving a deadline. <laughs> well, it was, uh, the publisher was happy. I had the book ready a month in advance because I thought they'd be giving it back to me to revise it. Mm -hmm. So I asked the editor if she wouldn't mind reading it as quickly as she could so that she could give it back to me so I could revise it in June because the baby was due in July. <laughs> So, um, 
when I was getting ready for that June, my own June deadline, mm -hmm. the book really wasn't due then, but for me it was, so I could be available for my daughter. Um, I was working day and night on the book. Well, that's an accomplishment to get it done ahead of time, but you had good motivation to do that. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, I'm sure it's going to be wonderful, and that teachers and the schools will be looking forward to it. I, I'd like to read the final product myself, and I'll do that when it comes out. I can't Although I could take this and cheat a little bit, couldn't I? <laughs> well, you know, what we tried to do in the book was to have different parts of it that would really help teachers. So there's so many um, lessons, uh, exact, exact words with what we said in the classroom. So mm -hmm. teachers can really see the flow of how the work went with our students. And the book is for teachers in grades 3 through 8. Mm -hmm. And so I worked with teachers um, in grades three, five, and eight. And there are lots of students' work samples that will be in the book. So you can really see the voices of the teachers, the voices of the students. And it's a compilation of, of um, all of the things that teachers told me they needed help with. Because see, I'm a problem solver. As a staff developer, mm -hmm. I worked with 140 teachers in New oh Jersey. My goodness. So whenever they needed help with something, they'd come to me. So I'd go in and we'd we brainstorm and I do lessons for them and so for example there's a there are chapters in there on how to differentiate instruction that means to make your instruction match exactly what the students are having difficulty with mm -hmm. so um, I think for that reason it's I hope it will really help teachers because it's very concrete but it's also built on research but um, there's a part called food for thought and I know a lot of school districts now have had to cut their professional development expenses mm -hmm. um, because of their budgets. So in every chapter, there's a section at the end on how they could have a study group study several questions related to that chapter or mm -hmm. other work that, that um, teachers could do to think more about the chapter and learn more on their own. Mm -hmm. There are also triads in the book in every chapter and that's where te I gave teachers a scenario for them to try that was an extension of what I showed them in the book. So I'm hoping it's going to be um, real user friendly. When I started my work in Massachusetts, my boss said to me, when I started as a staff developer, she said, it's a hand-holding position, Nancy. You need to hold the teacher's hands and help them to be able to do what they think they can't do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've tried to do. Well, I'm sure it's going to be very successful, and I'm so glad that you were here today to tell us all about these wonderful careers you've had. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy, thank you again for being my guest. I'm going to read my little script and finish us up here. Okay. Anyone having one distinguished career is fortunate, but to have five is truly remarkable. I know you have inspired many administrators, teachers, parents, and students to excel at reading and writing. I wish you tons of success with your new book when it is released in the spring. I hope you will come back to do another show so we can talk about more of your experiences and accomplishments. Thank you to HCAM and the team of dedicated volunteers who make this program possible. To my viewers, I hope this show will inspire you to help your children excel at two of life's most fundamental skills for success, reading and writing. Thank you for watching and see you next time. I'm Mary Arnott, signing out with Attitude.